Why am I in a time of great trouble and confusion? Why is my world falling apart? Why is everything disrupted? Why is everything seem to be unraveling? And I just don't know which way to go. Is that the question you are asking today? Maybe it is happening so that you can stop and think and look up to the one who says, Be still and know that I am God. I like to draw your attention to what the Bible says in Psalm 46, verse number 10. The word of God says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the head. I want you to notice how the psalmist writes in a time of great trouble and confusion. He says in verse number one, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He says this similar statement three times in our text today. I want you to notice verse number five. He says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. In verse number seven, he says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I want you to notice what the Bible says at the end of the passage again. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Most of the time, we used to think that we don't need the refuge unless there is a time of crisis. But the word of God is giving you a new assurance today that even in your time of great trouble and confusion, the Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. You see, the Bible here says this three times in its political and poetic way that God is our refuge. God is our refuge. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Why is it that the God of Jacob is our refuge? Let's look at the rest of our text. Now in verse number 2, the word of the Lord says, Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Look at what the word of God is saying. Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You may want to say right now, but there is a little problem going on. I'm in a state of confusion. But the Bible says, even though the earth be removed, yet the God of Jacob is our refuge. Even though the earth be removed, yet the God of Jacob is our refuge. Notice what he says in verse number 3. Though it waters roar and be troubled, though the mountain shake, with its swelling, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, remember one thing, the Lord of us is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Now notice what the Bible says in verse number 6, the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, but he uttered his voice and the earth melted, but he uttered his voice and the earth melted. The reason is because the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. In verse number 9, the Bible says, He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. 
He burns the chariot in the fire. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. I want you to pay attention to something. You see, in the context of Psalm 46, it is when the mountains are trembling at the presence of God. It is when the earth is removed. It is when the waters roar and swelling. It is when the walls are building around us and the rumors of walls are on every side. I want you to know one thing. The Bible is making us to know today in that time of great trouble and confusion that the Lord of hosts is with us and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Whenever you notice that your world is falling apart, come to Psalm 46. You see, in Psalm 46, we saw a description of what to do in a time of great trouble and confusion. Today, I want to preach to you on the subject of what to do in a time of great trouble and confusion. You see, I want you to know that it is possible for our world to fall apart unexpectedly, just like the time of COVID-19. It can fall apart because of an attack of an enemy from the outside or even secretly from within. You need to know this truth. Our world can fall apart because of some natural disasters. Our world can fall apart even spiritually. Our families can be struggling with spiritual problems and maybe even in our marriages right now as I speak. And there could be marriages that are on the brink of destruction. It could even be possible as I'm speaking to you right now as an individual that spiritually speaking your world is falling apart and you are in a time of great trouble and confusion and you are not what you want to be and you are not what others think that you are. You see today I like to take you to Psalm 46 again and verse number 10 to instruct you from the word of God that there is hope and there is something you can do in a time of great trouble and confusion. My friend, I'm here to tell you today that there is something you can do and there is something you must do in the name of Jesus Christ even when your world is falling apart. In Psalm 46 verse 10, God is speaking to you right now that be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the head. Be still and know that I am God. The first thing I want you to know today in a time of great trouble and confusion is that there is a call to eliminate our fears. There is a call to eliminate our emotions. In your time of great trouble and confusion, always remember there is a call to eliminate your fear. There is a call in this passage to eliminate your fear. What do I mean? God wants to give you calmness. That is why he's telling you today, be still. There is a call to eliminate your emotions. There is a call to eliminate your fear. I believe that sometimes God sends catastrophic events, He sends difficult situations into our lives to cause us to stop so that we can be still and experience calmness in His presence. You see, God can extend this call to your life right now to help you realize that nothing else matters to Him than your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. He can extend this call to you to eliminate your fear, to eliminate your emotions. I want to plead with you in the name of Jesus Christ to eliminate your fear so that you can stop and eliminate yourself, whether you are where God wants you to be. I want to emphasize that word again, be still. My friend, God is talking to you right now, be still. 
you see we live in a busy wrong wrong society but god is talking to you my son my daughter be still let god eliminate your fear today let god calm your emotions you see i want to tell you this if you are so scheduled out that you do not take time to be still in a solitary place and being alone with god you see you are a prime candidate for burnout and you've got to spend your time alone with god you've got to spend your time with god regularly let me tell you this it was not until moses got away from the palace and away from pharaoh and away from his throne that he was here too but out into the wilderness that he was able to be still long enough to see the bush burning now i want to remind you about elijah who was such a mighty prophet of god it was not until he was away from mount Carmel and away from his busy preaching schedule and away on a mountain somewhere that he had the white wind and he saw the fire and then he heard god's voice that is why there is a time when you just need to sort your computer off and turn your cell phone off let me tell you this it will be all right if you don't answer call for a day it will still be okay if you don't check your email five times every hour you will be all right you will survive yes it will be all right if you turn the radio off and shut the television off and turn the noise off and stop your busyness so that you can simply sit at the feet of jesus christ don't be busy everywhere without spending time soaking yourself in his presence looking into his eyes getting his attention and showing him that he has your attention be still be still it is a call to eliminate your fear and to calm down your emotion number two i want you to know that god is calling you to exercise your mind in the time of great trouble and confusion as god is talking to you right now to be still and know that i am god you need to realize that it is a call to know something it is a call to exercise your mind notice our text it says be still and know that i am god he wants us to know him he wants us to seek him you see the bible says in the book of isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 the bible says seek the lord why he may be found call upon him why he is near this implies that a time may come when he will not be found and a time may come when he is not near you see as the lord is speaking to you right now that be still and know that i am god he wants you to know him and he wants you to seek him it is a call to exercise your knowledge about god it is a call to exercise your mind now consider what the bible says in the book of second peter chapter 3 verse 18 it says but grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be the glory both now and forever amen but grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be the glory both now and forever amen now let's read from the book of john chapter 17 verse 3 the bible says and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent and this is eternal life that they may know you you can realize that god is talking about knowing god the bible is talking about knowing god and growing in the grace of god i want to ask you today what do you know about the lord jesus christ tell me now what do you know about him do you know him as the son of god he died on the cross 
he loves sinners. He is the sacrificial mm. lamb. He is God incarnate. He is alive and he is merciful. Are you satisfied with the knowledge that you already have about him? Or do you want to know him more today? Do you realize you could tap into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ every day, even for just 5 minutes or 15 minutes, just to study the person of Jesus Christ? I want to tell you today, our desire and our motivation and our consuming obsession is to know him more and to know him more and to know him more I want you to think about who jesus christ is and who he is to you and how that personally affects your life you see there is a call to exercise your mind and may i tell you right now that one reason the lord jesus christ disrupt our world and causes it to fall apart is so that we will exercise our mind with the ability to know God with the ability to come to his knowledge sometimes God disrupts our world to show us that we are not in control I want you to know this he is in control of your life just know this and exercise your mind in knowing God this is what I also want you to know and we have to get our minds around that have you completely surrendered to him to be in control of your life this is a call to eliminate your fear and your emotions and it is a call to exercise your mind with the knowledge of God this is what God wants you to do when you are in a time of great trouble and confusion and I want you to notice what the Bible says in Psalm 46 verse 10 again the Bible says be still and know that I am God I will be assorted among the nations I will be assorted in the head be still and know that I am God it is a call to assert his majesty it is a call to celebrate his majesty now will you say that you are in a time of great trouble and confusion if you have been falsely accused of rape and thrown in a prison in your young adult years and forgotten for at least three years i want you to remember joseph he had been there will you say that you are in a time of great trouble and confusion if you had received a report that all of your estates and all of your assets are gone that all of your earnings had been destroyed and stolen away job had been there before my friend will you say that you are in a time of great trouble and confusion if you had faithfully served god as a preacher pointing one man and one family to christ after another when all of a sudden you were imprisoned, thrown in jail, and eventually killed. John the Baptist was there. That is why he sent word to Jesus. He said, Are you really the Christ? Then Jesus said, The blind received their sight, the lame walk. Do you want to know what Jesus said about John the Baptist? Because of his humility and John's testimony, you know he was saying this he must increase but i must decrease and there is none greater than him that was the testimony john the baptist gave us about jesus but why did jesus say that when john was in trouble let me tell you something he said that because john the baptist had learned the lesson of psalm 46 verse 10 and what is the lesson be still and know that I am God would you also say that you are in a time of great trouble and confusion if you had received an incurable disease and you had gone to God on more than three occasions 
three occasions at least, asking God to remove the physical ailment, and he refused. I want you to know that Paul had been there before. No doctor could heal his problem. But finally, when he went to the Lord, the Lord said to him, I'm not going to remove your physical ailment, but he said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. When God said, my grace is sufficient to you, do you know what Paul realized? He realized the importance of Psalm 46 verse 10, of stopping and eliminating his emotions and exercising his mind with the knowledge of God, with the knowledge of what God can do in his life. My grace is sufficient for you. Be still and know that I am God. What do you do when you are in a great trouble and confusion? When your world falls apart, I want you to stop and eliminate your fear and emotion. Think and exercise your mind with the knowledge of God, with your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And exhort His majesty, God is saying to you today, my friend, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Finally, I want to remind you again, when you are in a time of great trouble and confusion, when your world falls apart, just stop. Eliminate your emotions and fear. Think and exercise your mind with your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ.